So last Saturday, November 7, Mr. Mark Golden defeated uh, Ms. Lisa Hanna to become the People's National Party's sixth president. He joins us now via Zoom to discuss plans for his party and the governance of the country. Uh, Mr. Golden, welcome to Smile Jamaica, sir. Thank you very much for having me. Good morning, Empress. Good morning, Bertis. Good morning, and congratulations again. Congrats, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, Thank you so much. I know you will correct me if I'm wrong. For some reason, I get the feeling that this wasn't um, an ambition for you to become the, the president of the People's National Party. Is that so? It has not been a lifetime ambition or even <coughs> a political motivation for most of my career in public life. But uh, in recent times, especially after the defeat that we suffered uh, on September 3rd, I started to think about what the party needed to move forward from a very difficult place where we find ourselves. And of course, there was a lot of encouragement from other people as well. And I thought that I had the necessary attributes to unite the party, help to rebuild the party, strengthen the organization, reach out to wider Jamaica, uh, whether it be the business community, the diaspora, uh, the various stakeholders in the society, and of course, ordinary Jamaicans as well. So, I, having considered those matters, I decided I had a duty really to my country at this point in time to offer myself. And of course, my chosen vehicle for public service has been the People's National Party because I'm aligned with the vision of empowerment and upliftment of the masses of the people. So, I decided to offer myself to the delegates. Yeah, just before. Just before Empress, maybe a, a light question. What was it like for you um, yesterday for the first time as the opposition leader? Well, did, did you feel any different? <laughs> well, you know, it was a so sobering moment. I had to go to King's House and um, receive the instrument of appointment from the Governor General. There was a, a short ceremony there, which was very nice. And after that, of course, went to Parliament uh, for the first time as leader of the opposition. And... That was an enjoyable experience. The, um, some of the uh, government side were, you know, came and greeted me and we had a nice exchange of conversation. And it was quite a busy session actually yesterday. There was quite a lot of activity in Parliament. So it wasn't a relaxed parliamentary sitting from that standpoint, but it was enjoyable. Excellent. <laughs> Talking about the sitting of Parliament, Mr. Golding, um, tell us your views on opposition opposition leading the oversight committees or chairing the oversight committees what are you calling on the wholeness administration to do well in 2007 the then prime minister bruce golding introduced a, a new innovation which was to allow opposition mps to chair the various committees of the House of Representatives. And he did so because he thought it was a, a positive move from the point of view of governance, because the role of Parliament is to keep a check and balance on the executive. That is one of the roles of Parliament. And within the Parliament, it's the opposition that have a vested interest in doing so. So it was an enlightened position. In the PNP government, which followed the, the Bruce Bowley administration, we kept, we kept that convention, we established it and continued with it. And in the, <clears throat> in the last Andrew Holness administration, his first term, he also continued with it. However, since winning this election, he took a decision to change it and to take back the chairmanship of all of the sessional committees. I think there are seven or eight of them, except two. Um, so there are now only two that are being chaired by an opposition person and the others are all going to be chaired by the government side and we feel that was a backward step because we think that the 2007 change was a positive change in terms of good governance um checks and balances and so on so we have been trying to persuade him to reconsider that position yeah. and of course the the civil society groups have come out in support of our position as well uh, they even though we're not saying that, and we would agree that there are certain additional enhancements that have been suggested actually by National Integrity Action and others, and we would be quite willing to consider those, but the idea of the opposition persons chairing the committees, we, we support that, and we think that 
having spanned three successive administrations, it ought not to have been changed now. You know, I think it's important for us and the viewers to understand why, why is it that the Prime Minister felt a need to change it. I was hearing about some of the committees not sitting regularly. Um, you know, why, 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 what was the argument for the change, Mr. Golding? Well, their arguments were put forward, uh, including the fact that some of the committees have not been meeting frequently. But the truth is that there's a problem with scheduling because the Parliament has one meeting room that is big enough to host a committee because mm -hmm. the committee has to have Hansard recording it and, and stakeholders come and engage and so on. So the chamber, the main chamber of the, of the parliament at Gordon House is the meeting room where parliament sits, senate sits, and all of the committees have to sit. Yep. And yeah. scheduling times has been challenging. And so you, and also priority tends to be given to the public accounts committee and the, and the PAAC, because those two have a special role in, in terms of dealing with the accountability and so on. So other committees have not always been able to sit as frequently as they would like. And I think we need to address that as an issue uh, so that committees can sit more frequently. I don't think it had anything to do with the chairmanship of those committees, but that was what was put forward as a reason for the change. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Thank President, you. what about your shadow cabinet, sir? Will there be many changes? Will there be any changes? And if so, when will we hear that? And a double barrel question, what about uh, Dr. Phillips's seat? What will happen there? Who will go there? What will happen there? Well, Dr. Phillips remains, as you know, the Member of Parliament for East Central St. Andrew. And I believe he's um, minded to stay on for as long as it suits the party and himself. And so we don't have a specific date for, um, for that to change. Okay. In terms of the shadow cabinet, I'm reviewing that along with other things that uh, are now before me as party leader. And I would say in, within the next few weeks, uh, I will make a decision around that. I have not yet really focused on it because I'm, we have a shadow cabinet in place. And it's not an urgent priority to, to tinker with it. But within the next few weeks, I will complete a review and there may be some adjustments. Can you share, can you share with us some of the other things that, you, that are important that you have in your table right now? Well, the whole question of unity and unifying the party and a process to um, assist the party to come together, which I think is tremendously important, that is something which is, uh, is exercising my mind and where pursuing various strategies to achieve that. That is something that the delegates of the party during the campaign that we just went through um, were very, very strong on. So I know that there's a desire to see that happen. As you know, we've had a series of internal contests over the last 10 to 15 years, each of which has left in its wake some amount of um, unease or disaffection within the party. And that has... Um, we feel that there needs to be a deliberate process of trying to resolve those things and put them to bed once and for all so we can move forward as one family with a common purpose. So that is one of the things that is exercising my mind. There are other transitional things to do with uh, mundane matters such as the lead of the opposition's office sorting that out, uh, getting, you know, various things like that. We have an NEC coming up where we'll have to select a new general secretary and a new chairman or chairperson. And uh, so there are various things happening. And of course, the country is going through very difficult times with the, the rain damage, which has been severe. And I would like to get the opportunity to visit some of those communities as well. Uh, yesterday wasn't possible because of the swearing in and then parliament, but I'm hoping to get a chance to, to start to do that. So there's a, there are various things on, the, on my plate at the moment. All right. Um, Mr. President of the People's National Party, you defeated Lisa Hanna. Tell me, how are things with her? I'm, I'm sure you two have had a conversation. What are the plans going forward together? Well, Lisa and I get along well. Uh, we've known each other for a long time. And yes, we were, were on contestants in this recent exercise of selecting a leader. But since then, we've had dialogue both via 
um, messaging and by telephone. Unfortunately, she has uh, she's not well. She's not feeling well at the moment. Mm. So she was unable to attend um, Parliament or the swearing-in yesterday. And uh, I'm hoping that she will feel well enough soon that we can actually have a physical meeting and discuss the way forward. We do wish her a speedy recovery because you know how, how some people are. They didn't see her at the swearing-in, so everybody is saying, boy, she didn't go because she doesn't support him. So I'm glad you could clear that up. And again, wishing her a speedy recovery. What about uh, the former leader of the party, uh, former Prime Minister Portia simpson -Milo? We had I wasn't hearing a lot from her. How is she? She's well. I think she's enjoying uh, a more private life at the moment. Uh, she's always... Um, willing to have conversations and receive visitors and so on. But I, I think that she prefers not to be in the public domain as much as when she was involved actively in politics. And we, you know, we respect that. Mr. Golden, I congratulate you again, sir. And I wish you all the very, very best. Big job, tough job. Um, but I, I, I think you uh, probably will handle it. Um, very, very well. Thank you for speaking with us this morning, sir. God bless. And just Thank so you know, he, he's looking for a new career move in politics, so you can recruit him. You hear? <laughs> Absolutely. God <laughs> help you. <laughs> God help you. <laughs> Take care, sir. <laughs> On the other side of the break, what's happening? On the, on other, the side other side of, of the break, we find out about a project that celebrates the development of premature babies. Stick and stay for that.